Is there really a shortage of appraisers? Our exclusive interview with Class Valuation's John Dingman gives us the answer, that in moments. Welcome back to the Industry Leader Update. Numerous reverse mortgage professionals are reporting longer turnaround times between an appraisal order and completion, and they're not alone. In fact, traditional mortgage professionals are facing the very same challenge. Naturally, the question that one would ask is why, but the answer may not be quite as simple as one would think. To help us get a clearer understanding of what is truly happening in the appraisal market space, we interviewed John Dingman. John is the chief appraiser for Class Valuation AMC and has over two decades of experience under his belt. Not only is he an expert in appraisal valuation, but he is also a student of the macro trends in residential appraisals in the U.S. John, thank you for joining us. Is there truly a shortage of appraisers today? In 2016, Shannon, there was a reference to an appraiser shortage at that time. It was mostly related to uh, what we call the cow states, Colorado, Oregon, and Washington. Um, I'm not sure it was a shortage, and most appraisers around the country were looking shoulder to shoulder, asking that same question. Even today, I don't know if shortage is the right word, but an appraiser capacity issue is probably the right word. We're losing about one to one and a half percent appraisers per year. Uh, we have been for the last decade with the exception of one year where it increased by one and a half percent. And appraisers are performing a record number of appraisal assignments. A good indicator of this is Freddie Mac uh, released um, uh, an article about appraiser capacity um, issues uh, and specifically gave some data, uh, data around the performance of appraisers and their volume per state. And so we look at states like California, the appraisers are performing about 44% more appraisals on an annual basis than they had the previous year. In uh, Vermont, it was north of 60%. And so the lowest state was around 40, 44%, all the way up to near 80%. Um, and so those represent capacity issues and appraisers and, and clients just need to work to become more efficient at completing those assignments or at least the appraisal reports themselves. Um, and then we have some other stuff in front of us, get licensed appraisers involved uh, once again with FHA uh, through HR 3008. Does the Freddie Mac data reflect all residential appraisals? And what's important with the Freddie Mac data in, in particularly is it's just talking about appraisals submitted to Fannie and Freddie. It's not including all of the reports uh, for FHA, USDA, VA, private mortgage money lenders, et cetera. Um, and so if appraisers are capacity with just the GSEs, um, you start hacking on all of these other appraisal assignments and the residential appraiser is busy, right? In years past, many have pointed to an attrition of appraisers, maybe due to retirement or exiting the profession, as one possible contributor to periodic increases we see in appraisal turnaround times. Where is the industry when it comes to active appraisers and also attrition? Is there attrition to the appraiser community? I, I think using that same graph, Shannon, with Freddie Mac, you'll notice there's been a stagnant line of 40,000 appraisers submitting to the UCDP portal, which is for conventional loans only, but that means there's 40,000 appraisers working in the mortgage financial transaction space. And that number has not really changed since 2013, right? Um, so new entries to the market, I think appraisers are aging. That's no secret. The average age continues to climb from 55 to 56 to I think 57. Um, and uh, again, we're seeing about one and a half percent per year attrition to appraisers. And then as far as new entries, uh, we've seen some increase in new entries in different states, which is encouraging, uh, but we really need on the uh, conventional side of the business, if you will, to allow the greater use of trainees, uh, which would allow the appraiser who's supervising them to really uh, maximize uh, the efforts there. Otherwise, they're inspecting each property with the trainee and that's not cost effective. Thank you, John. There you have it. The real estate market forces that are contributing to an increased appraisal turnaround time that 
many of you watching are experiencing today. In fact, we've included a link to Freddie Mac's Spotlight on Appraisal Capacity in the show notes here on heckamworld.com. That includes the maps we showed just moments ago. Share your stories on appraisal turnaround times in our comments section below, but be sure to note your city or region as the impacts are truly localized. That's a wrap for this week. Be sure to share today's show with other reverse mortgage professionals. You can do that on your LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter profiles. If you enjoy YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our Heckam World channel. That way you can have early previews of this and our other shows. Just hit subscribe and click on the notification bell. That way you never miss an upcoming episode. There's no easier way for you to catch up on reverse mortgage news that's important to you with our weekly podcast, Heckam World Weekly. You can listen here on Heckam World or subscribe and listen on iTunes as well. Thank you for joining us and until next week, happy originating.